You know, I think if you take a take a step back and look, in 2020, gold averaged 1773. In 2021, it averaged 1798. In 2022, it averaged 1801. And, and in last year, it was 1943. And here we are above 2000. And when you reflect on the, the central bank purchasing, um, which has been taking advantage of my, in my opinion, of the Western bank suppression, coupled with the epic monetary expansion of the last four years, I think the sky is the limit for the price of gold. And and, you know, look, bottom line to me is is that gold will go higher than anyone thinks possible. You have the, the biggest money in the world, the, the most sophisticated money in the world, the most well-informed money in the world, the central banks that are accumulating it. Gold's weekly trend shows a notable uptick on Friday, with the precious metal set to end the week positively. This positive movement is spurred by a decline in U.S. Treasury bond yields amidst relatively calm news cycles. Andy Sheckman, CEO of Miles Franklin, shares an optimistic view on gold's future, noting that it has significant potential for further growth. This perspective is significantly influenced by the actions of central banks, which Sheckman regards as knowledgeable and discerning when it comes to monetary decisions. Adding to this sentiment, the World Gold Council reports that central banks show no sign of stopping their gold accumulation efforts in 2024. The prevailing geopolitical tensions, notably conflicts in Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Palestine, and concerns in the Red Sea have further reinforced the need for gold in central banks' reserves, surpassing the U.S. dollar. According to the WGC, central bank purchases of gold are expected to continue, maintaining a trend that's been consistent since the global financial crisis. Sheckman emphasizes that gold prices are likely to reflect the gradual weakening of the U.S. dollar, rather than just a simple increase in gold's intrinsic value. Currently, the U.S. dollar index, which measures the dollar's performance against six major currencies, is trading near 103.90, showing a slight decline. Sheckman also touches upon the possibility of gold prices rising significantly around major global events, such as the BRICS meeting in October 2024 and the U.S. election in November 2024. These events could intensify the international market's focus on gold, potentially driving higher prices. Join us as we explore the insights shared by Andy Sheckman. Stay updated by subscribing to our channel and activating notifications. Thank you. In if you look at gold, it is the tortoise. It is it's not the hare. If we go back to the beginning of 2000, for 24 years, gold has produced an annual return of 7.8 percent. Jesse, when we compare that, for example, to the to the S and P 500, uh, 7 percent. When we look at the bond market, it's not even close. Gold has really over time outpaced just about everything else. And when we talk about, you know, let's just look at the last few years as an example. And you know, everyone is focused on the fact that gold hasn't performed as well as it should have. And I. I agree of that. I agree with that very, very much. But, you know, I think if you take a take a step back and look in 2020, gold averaged 1773. In 2021, it averaged 1798. In 2022, it averaged 1801. And, and in last year, it was 1943. And here we are above 2000. And when you reflect on the, the central bank purchasing, um, which has been taking advantage of my, in my opinion, of the Western bank suppression, coupled with the epic monetary expansion of the last four years, I think the sky is the limit for the price of gold. And, you know, look, Bottom line to me is is that gold will go higher than anyone thinks possible. You have the, the biggest money in the world, the, the most sophisticated money in the world, the most well-informed money in the world, the central banks that are accumulating it. They're using the suppression of the paper market. I mean, if you look on Shanghai right now, gold is priced almost $100 higher in Shanghai than it is in London and in uh, on the COMEX, they are beginning to slowly arbitrage and turn up the heat. And a common theme that I talk about over and over and over again, and you can apply it to so many different areas in the world, whether it be socially, morally, economically, politically, it's called logarithmic decay. And it's little by little by little by little by little, then bang all at once. And what we have been seeing is a little by little by little movement of gold higher and higher and higher, really outpacing just about everything. But not getting any attention. And this started in 20, in 2000. Little by little, it has outpaced everything, but it's not flashy and it is the tortoise. And But in the end, it does what it's supposed to do. In fact, in all currencies around the world, with the exception of the dollar, just about we're at all-time highs. And 
it's doing what it is supposed to do. Uh, the dollar is blurring it because of its inordinate, in my opinion, unjustified strength. But be careful what you wish for. It will reach those all-time highs. It will do so probably in a fashion that catches almost everyone off guard. But the real question is what what happens in that environment? Because to me, it's not gold going up. It's the dollar going down. And right now, it's actually performed pretty darn well after 11 straight interest rate increases and a dollar that's pretty darn strong, yet it's still showing great strength and resilience. And I, I would say, um, you know, with, with the big BRICS meeting in October, 200 BRICS meetings up until that, leading up to that, to the big meeting in October in Russia, 200 meetings surrounding BRICS. And, and the election in November, chances are we'll see much, much higher gold before the music stops. The mid-North American session on Friday saw an optimistic market mood as indicated by Wall Street's positive performance. This environment and a decline in U.S. Treasury yields led to a rise in silver prices. The silver is trading at $22.93, marking a 0.86% increase. Despite breaching the $22.90 level, silver remains tilted towards a downward trajectory from a technical perspective. However, it has yet to reach a neutral state. For buyers to take control, they must overcome resistance levels above $23. Andy points out that several speculators who had initially invested in silver with the expectation of quick gains are now feeling increasingly disheartened by the market's performance. This growing frustration and some investors' capitulation could indicate an impending significant price increase. Let's get back to the interview. You know, Rick Rule said it best. He said something to the extent that when you go through many, many years of, of a structural supply deficit in silver, and at the same time, the speculators who bought it thinking that they, a lot of them thought they'd get rich. And, and I never sell metal to get wealthy. It is wealth and probably will end up making you wealthy. If you have strong enough fingertips, but these people are getting more and more frustrated. Many are capitulating, as you say, and, and that, that big rise everyone expects that attracted them in the first place to me in that contrarian environment seems to be getting, getting imminently closer because of that. Because when everyone finally lets go and says, I'm done, I can't take this anymore, that's when we see the rise. But when you talk about an asymmetrical risk-reward type of environment, what can I invest in that has the lowest downside risk and the best upside? I don't see a better thing in the world than silver, Jesse. And I, I try to be objective. I mean, if you're, if you're um, not objective, you're full of crap and people will, will bust right through it. I think to myself, I mean... You know, you look at the at the Silver Institute, who's telling us the supply demand fundamentals, and they ignore the military industrial complex. They don't even put that in there. I gave a speech at the VRIC the other day, and I, I've been saying for a long time that you know there's um, there's 500 ounces of silver in the tip of a Tomahawk cruise missile. For years, I've been saying that, and I. Last year, not this last one, but the year before I gave a speech and a man came up to me and he said, you know, I work uh, as a consultant for the Department of Defense. And he says, I, I know there's some silver in there. I'm going to check on that. Now, I never heard back from him. I, I go and, and gave my speech again this year. And lo and behold, there he was. He had a handful of pictures. He said, everything I'm going to show you is declassified. And he showed me how they they tested the, the Tomahawk cruise missile uh, in the ocean in California on a on a automated bed about 50 feet under the water and, and how they had problems uh, um, shooting the Tomahawk cruise missile vertically instead of horizontally because of the, the guidance system and this and that. And he says, yeah, this was my baby. And he says, I got to tell you something. You're right. There's between 14 and 15 kilograms in the tip of a Tomahawk cruise missile, almost exactly 500 ounces. You're spot on. Now, that's just one form of of, of munition. I mean, there's all sorts of high-tech weaponry and and missiles and you know, and, and, and aerospace and, and, and stealth fighters, all of these things need copious amounts of silver, yet it's not talked about in the supply demand fundamentals. And I, I just, to me, when you see a country like India, Jesse, buy 400 million ounces of silver in the last two years, that's almost twice as much as is on COMEX. That's what we know of. This is not lost on a lot of the uh, the world. I believe silver should be reclassified not as a industrial metal, which certainly it is in green and and digital applications around the globe, but maybe much more than that is a strategic metal where it is needed in things like warfare. And if you look around, all of a sudden we're we're currently bombing two countries. 
we're involved in wars all around the world. And if we're not directly involved in them, it seems as though the, the companies who ma manufacture all this stuff in the United States are supplying the wars all around the world. Now, is it too far-fetched to think, or is there is the line between conspiracy and reality not thin enough to realize that maybe there's something bigger at play here, that the people who are kind of pulling the strings around the world have made a fortune in, in creating war, and they need silver, period, in order to do it. The prices of gold could sustainably scale up as central banks could accumulate more in reserves this year in 2024. Gold is currently around the $2,025 mark and could end the year, reaching a new high of $2,200. The steady accumulation by central banks keeps gold prices afloat and boosts the arm despite uncertainty. Considering these insights, what do you think about the prospects of gold and silver prices? Do you believe geopolitical tensions and central bank policies will continue influencing precious metal markets? That's all from us. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.